scribble drawing is something that we probably do quite naturally. Sitting, oh, in a boring old meeting and you just start to scribble away just to, well, stop yourself dying of boredom really. <laughs> or you're on a long phone call and you look down at a piece of paper in front of you and maybe you've got lots of doodles and, and you, you do that naturally. Well, we can harness this to do scribble drawings far more purposefully. A lot of people do scribble drawings just using one of these fine liner pens because they flow on and on and on and that's great. But I want to show you scribble drawing using one of these gorgeous glass dip pens. The advantage of this dip pen is that one dip goes on a very long way. Oops, just <laughs> didn't go on that far actually. I think because there was some dried ink on that. Oh, that's better. Yeah, look, look how far it goes. So an ordinary dip pen, you're going to struggle to do scribble drawing with because it'll run out after a couple of scribbles. Whereas, as I say, this, this dip pen, the glass dip pens go on for a good long time so you can really start to scribble. You could, of course, use a fountain pen and that would be great too, but I thought this would just be a bit of fun um, because I'm such a fan of these glass dip pens and if you haven't seen my review of them, do have a look at that. They're just beautiful. Likewise, you can use a drawing ink. Lots of you, I expect, will remember these beautiful little bottles of... Winsor and Newton drawing inks. These were around when I was at school, which was quite some time ago. The packaging is stunning and those are really lovely. Do go careful if you use those and you're dipping with your pen because with the glass dip pen, it's very easy just to break the nib. You could just use fountain pen ink. I've got some drawing ink that I've put in here. It was uh, a Jackson's drawing ink. So it is waterproof once dry, which is important to know. Like the colour, that was supposedly Prussian blue and it wasn't really as dark as I wanted. So I added a few drops of black drawing ink and you can mix your colours just like watercolour to, to get the colour that you want. So a few tips on scribble drawing just before we get going. I like a pencil outline, but I suggest don't outline what you're going to be scribbling. Let your scribbles fill the space because if you put that outline it ends up really jarring against the beautiful scribbles and the, the more organic lines that you've achieved. I'm looking at tones here rather than anything else. So if you do your scribbles, however random they are, far apart, our eye will just read those as a very light tone. Whereas maybe if you do smaller scribbles and far closer together, our eye will read those as a dark tone. You could of course do big scribbles far apart and do multiple layers to darken the tone. Actually doing random scribbles is possibly a little harder than you might think. Our temptation, or my temptation, and I wonder you might be the same, is almost to do that sort of repetitive mark. And, I mean, that's not a problem, but you don't want it to look repetitive. So you do want to change direction and let the, the scribbles go all over the place pen you're using you might find it to be easier to be random if you hold it further down the barrel with a glass dip pen that doesn't hold true uh, it's quite hard it doesn't feel comfortable if you hold it further down and you'll find the ink doesn't particularly flow it's worth doing a ball like I've done here and then just having a go say if the lights coming from there getting a lighter area and building up the darker tone away from the light just to get a feel of, of that, just as a warm-up exercise. And scribble drawing is incredibly therapeutic because in some ways you just don't have to think that much about what you're doing. You can just let the line wander and wiggle. What I like about the pen, you can see in some places the line has gone thicker 
and I rather like that. It adds an extra dimension. What you need to be careful about is that this does take a while to dry and I love scribbles but I don't like smudges so if you're having to work over a wet area it might be worth getting a piece of kitchen towel to rest your hand the on. The other thing is that even though I've said it is super therapeutic it, it can be quite easy for some of your lines to get a little bit tight so if you feel that your shoulders getting all a bit tense the whole point of this is that it's meant to be really relaxing what I like to do is just then do a random larger mark coming outside the lines and just adding to that process and adding to the randomness of it and that just loosens your shoulder up and stops you being too tight. This is a piece of watercolour paper and I'm going to be doing this on watercolour paper because I want to add some washes of ink at the end. If you really like crisp marks I suggest that you use either a hot press paper which is totally smooth and this is a cold press or a knot surface and it's got a bit of a bobble to it but if you use a smoother surface you'll get crisper lines. One thing to check before you get going is that your ink is waterproof on your paper and even if the bottle says that your ink is waterproof do check it make sure it's dry and then just check because some papers seem to be a bit grippier and they hold on to the ink more so even if your ink is waterproof on one paper it might not be or fully waterproof on another this is the reference i've chosen put the link in the comments section or the description section i've got my dark blue ink i've got my glass pen and here is it's a quarter sheet of imperial Paper. I've taped it down that has the advantage of giving a nice clean edge when I take the tape off and it does mean it won't move around while I'm filming. Mindful of not wanting to simply outline it I am going to start on the eye and I'm going to start with those lovely wrinkles around the eye and then where I'm starting to see tone I'm going to start scribbling. I'm not going to go for my full details straight away because I think it's nicer to, to build up and to work out how much detail you do want to get in as you go along because the danger is you do lots of detail and then you sort of get halfway and get a bit fed up or it looks out of balance and you can't undo things so it's far better to do too little and then come back and build it up. And I'm just following those lines. My pencil sketch was very light, not very detailed, and I just wanted to sort of have some indication of proportions to make sure that that was all okay. I'm dipping as I need to and just letting those lines go for walk. So I'm doing basically a continuous line drawing and I'm building up the de the, the tone, say round, round its mouth here with, with scribbles. Some of these are more linear because it is such a wrinkly rhino. Say under the mouth, I'm gonna have to do more scribbles, sort of more densely, smaller marks. Ah. That was really foolish. Uh, I've just managed to put a big blob on here that I'm going to have to disguise and work into my drawing. So let's put that on a piece of paper and we will sort that out when I get over there. These are quite small, so let's do what I was su suggesting of loosening up because I feel very tight. My shoulder feels tight partly because I'm, I'm filming this and I'm trying to concentrate on filming as well as talking as well as drawing so you know there, there's a lot going on in my poor little head um, so let's every so often just do one of those lines to muck it all up so uh, it doesn't matter and it it's a fast way of working it's a surprisingly speedy way of working got to be careful because the danger is that this is wet and I will smudge it 
say splots of ink I have no issue with but smudges just look really ugly so let's try and avoid those if I can. Now I was saying I don't particularly want to outline I may need to but I have got the option of coming back in with washes of ink that will help develop tone as well so let's see we might do that. It's got almost like a beak on it hasn't it? Just let my eye rove around and I can adjust my pencil drawing if my pencil drawing wasn't terribly accurate and I can adjust it as I go along. My scribbles are less circular on this rhino than it might be on another subject just because it seems to suit the sort of nature of the rhino and its um, lovely wrinkly skin. I'm going to resist the temptation of putting in all those lines. I am finding actually I can hold this pen a little further away than I thought I'd be able to and that does make for a nice looser line. And let's not forget about some of those sort of going off lines. So effectively we are drawing the or filling in the medium and the darker tones and the lighter tones so for example this is light here we're leaving blank or with very few lines on them it has got a strong line these wonderful folds of flesh but if i did a continuous line it would look very out of keeping with everything else. So I might do a more of a backwards forwards sort of line. And I think that sort of mark is better and more random. Let's get up to an ear. I think lovely wrinkles there. Now inside the ear is really dark, so I might want to build up smaller scribbles to build up that tone. Good thing to do is to squint at your work and also to have your reference as black and white. With your ink, if you're struggling, to, I'm struggling to sort of dip in it because when it's straight, my nib's not going in. So I might just prop it up on something so that it's on a... Uh, an angle like that just to make it a little deeper for me to dip in. If you do like the, the scratchy noise of the pen then obviously this is really not the technique for you but I don't find it unpleasant. Right we're going to build up some of this dark under his chin, this huge fold and see what happens there to reveal that horrible smudge that I did earlier and think carefully how I can um, do something about that. You can often do quite a lot of disguising and you know how the thing is just not to panic. So my lines are definitely a bit scratchier than they would be normally but I think that is just entirely appropriate for for this rhino though I keep wanting to call a hippo and I absolutely know it is a rhino so if I've said hippo at any point please don't tell me it's just say that it comes to the point when <laughs> I can't talk draw operate a camera <laughs> and and make sense so Let's see, we are going to disguise away. So you've got to try and make sure that your marks are really good and random. It's very easy to fall into the trap of patterns. We, you know, just see them 
and that's not what we're trying to do here. Okay, so I've probably done the whole rhino to a similar level of finish all over and now I can go back and start thinking right where do I need to put a little more detail or density of mark so like this broken horn I think that would be good and just build that up and then want some of the sort of up and down marks as well as the ones that flow here and again I just needing to to break up some of those lines I mean this is not a furry creature so we shouldn't do any marks outside of the lines that end up looking like fur but I just think they will stop this looking tight I think it needs more of a chin and the joy of this is because we haven't done a strong outline it's quite easy just to extend things so if you look back and think mm, not sure about that we can just extend it and also we can sort of amend and I'm not suggesting that we want to caricature our animal but you know you might want to make the horn a little bit larger in your painting than it is in real life because the horn is such a distinguishing feature of the the rhino so you might want to do that uh, I say just need to be careful that it doesn't become a caricature or a cartoon but you can emphasize things and you know, we know that rhinos have almost been driven to extinction because of their horns and the ridiculous trading in, in horns for, for particularly for Chinese medicine. Um, so you might, as a statement, want to emphasize that this is very dark down here, but I'm not going to make it solid because I do want to paint with the water and, and let the ink do its work as well. Even if places are really quite in the um, the light, you can have a few lines across them. So don't don't be frightened of putting a few lines because it's all going to be about tone and contrast. So there's all my scribble work. Now, if my ink is still wet, which I think it is in places, I can just draw some clean water over the top and let the, the ink go for a bit of a wander. So you can see that some of that ink is, is moving, but it this area particularly is almost dry. I can wet it and then drop more ink in should I wish to. Now I don't want my water to be tight. The whole point of this and this looseness, I want that to carry on. Let's, so this is all still just clean water. I've got quite a dark area here would be nice to tone and there coming up into the sort of forehead area it all just depends whether any of that ink still isn't dry and I can carry on like this and start to think where I want to actually do a bit more painting by dropping some ink in not too much because I don't want it to go solid, but into some of these areas so that we get lovely feathery marks and those start to echo some of the, the scribbly marks. If you feel it's getting too tight, just as we have these scribbly marks, you can, which can really work nicely, just use a little spray bottle 
to start moving some of the ink wash away from the picture and carry on a looseness of the ink wash that echoes the looseness of that line. There's darkness here. Oh, look at that ink just start to move through the, the water, which is lovely. And then if I come over to here, I can immediately disguise that splodge that was upsetting me earlier. Here in this corner, I might just splatter. Just get some more interest going on here. I want to darken down there. I might put some splatters up here and round his ears. That could be great fun. Then I might just dilute some ink and actually do what I would call negative painting. So I'm doing this a lot more carefully because look, I want to capture the light on that dish of its head and the shape there. But then I can just, well, just loosen up that edge so I don't end up with a straight edge there, but being careful of those bigger drops here. And I might just do the same over there around the top of its horn. Take that off, make sure that's wet and then put in a little bit of ink that will just emphasise the top of that horn. Ooh, that's a lovely feathery mark there, isn't it? fact let's do a little more of that love that mark look at that go and you'll find some inks actually separate out which can be beautiful so they uh quink ink which is a fountain pen ink the black separates out into blue into sepia and that can be really lovely this one is not separating out but if you've got an ink that does separate out you can really exploit that so that your monochrome picture suddenly becomes actually multicoloured and, and really gorgeous. So then we'd let that dry and just make sure we're, we're happy with the balance of things. And if we're not, we can go back in with a bit more line work or a bit more wash work. But it's always easy to do more and a lot, lot harder to do less. So I think we should stop here and come back when it's dry. And now just see whether there's anything that you want to crisp up. It's so therapeutic that you may well want to go a little bit too far. And the wonderful thing is that you sort of get order out of chaos. And if life is feeling a little chaotic, then maybe this is a good lesson that even though it looks like the lines are going every which way and we don't know what's going on, that actually it does make sense and hopefully that will, when our lives are feeling a little chaotic, maybe we look at it with squinted eyes and maybe some of it will make sense too. Get a larger double of so I'm just putting a larger dot. Oh, that was large. Then I just give a bit of, oh, that's all dry. Just carefully remove your tape because I've been blow drying it and you can blow dry your ink. Just make sure it doesn't explode off. Um, the tape has started to lift. So if your tape has stuck too much and is ripping your paper, just hair dryer it and that starts to soften the glue and you should be fine. So here's our finished piece. It's so therapeutic to work on one of these scribbly drawings. It doesn't take long and yet at the end of all that chaos you can see your subject come to life. I hope you've really enjoyed that and that you'll have a go.